I'm invited to the world record's largest nerf battle as a VIP guest, and I'm going to use this opportunity to transform a cheap thrift shop nerf blaster into my most valuable piece of art. And I'm talking about memories, not monetary value. The issue is, I only have 10 days to complete the modifications before I fly out to Dallas for the event, plus I'm going to need the help of some of the most popular nerf creators on the planet to make this happen. This will be one of the most amazing experiences in my lifetime, and this blaster project has to be the perfect time capsule to capture the essence of it. But right now, I still have to choose the nerf blaster for this mod. My choices are restricted. The blaster has to be small enough to shove into a suitcase, but large enough to execute my game plan. While scrounging through my drawers, I discover a Nerf Rebel Sweet Revenge, a blaster that I thrifted for $5 two years ago. I just knew it would come in handy someday. Now it's time to gut the blaster with my professional dollar store screwdriver kit. Rebel series blasters are generally easier to take apart and paint compared to a lot of other Nerf blasters, and that time saved is a necessity for me. Alongside this project, I'm simultaneously editing and filming two other priority videos and creating merch to give out at the event, meaning I technically have less than 10 days to finish redesigning designing the Sweet Revenge. Now I have to remove the internals from the plastic shell, and the whole mechanism comes out in like one single amazing Costco bundle. We're going to take the action outside where I'll sand down all those pesky nerf logos and warning labels from the plastic pieces. Look at that raw concentration. Doing a little more sanding, just enough to give some more surface roughness for the spray paint to stick on. I throw the remains of the body into the tub, wash away the mess, and start taping it up. I begin applying a blanket of Shadow Realm Black on the pieces, now layering on some sunscreen white. This will be the predominant color scheme to achieve that minimalistic look I'm going for. To give the blaster a little more class, I'm applying a touch of gold to the remaining pieces such as the barrel. All this spray painting has been going on for days, partially because the rainier than usual weather is really limiting my ability to do this outdoors. I only have 3 days left to finish this all up, and partway through painting, I realized I made a mistake. I should have more orange on the front piece just to make it more apparent that this is simply a toy. Then I make a mistake on top of the mistake by using crappy quality spray paint. I was hoping this wouldn't happen, the fluorescent paint did not stick well on this plastic so I'm going to have to scrap that. I'm going to take enamel paint, which is also orange, and slather that on instead. But yet again, another failure. Man, things are not going well today, like this enamel paint is also not working because it's still not covering the black. I am not quite sure what to do at this point. Everything was going great until now and I'm freaking out. If I can't fix this orange mess, it'll ruin this nerf project and this video. I think I just had to paint over this part black again, then go out, buy some orange spray paint, and then just redo this and hope it sticks this time. Please work. The black is still kind of leaking through the paint here, but at least it provides a little bit of texture. I now have less than two days to finish this mod and I'm just hoping no other issues pop up. If you're limited on time like me and want to create quick and fun nerf videos, consider today's sponsor, Wondershare Filmora 11. If you have a brain, you will be able to make cool videos with this easy to use video editor. I even used it for some of the scenes in this video. Listen, no one likes watching 10,000 YouTube tutorials just to learn how to edit. That's why I think Wondershare Filmora is super powerful because its huge libraries of effects and templates allow you to add that Gordon Ramsay finesse to videos without all this screaming and yelling. Normally I'm too lazy to make custom fancy titles, but here I can just drag and drop templates, customize my text, and easily snap them into place. I could be like, world's largest blaster battle, adults versus kids, fire transition, then show the kids getting wrecked. I took that boring clip of me sanding, I added a bunch of Filmora's effects to it, and now it's more cursed, and that's exactly what I wanted. If you want a more budget-friendly and easy way of making your own movies, check out Wondershare Filmora 11 using my link in the description. Thanks to them for supporting the channel, now back to the nerf content. In its finished form, this nerf blaster will be only for display and won't be played with, so I don't have to worry about doing any sort of internal modifications here. All that's left to do is debandage this blaster and hope the paint job is good enough. No matter what, I have to accept the results because I should be packing my suitcases. In this case, I can breathe a sigh of relief. Introducing the Dreamcatcher. The name's fitting because this whole trip kind of feels unreal. Overall, the paint job aligned with the vision I had, J just ignore the, the looking at the blaster from this angle. I'm super relieved we've completed this part of the project, but now I need help to complete the most critical pieces of this mod at Jared's Epic Blaster Battle 7. And that's to get this blaster signed by all 10 VIP guests, who are some of the most famous nerf creators in the entire world. 
Not only that, I want to get all their signatures on video, store it on a USB, and attach it to the blaster to make it the coolest time capsule ever. I need all the assistance I can get, so my friend Carl is also traveling to Dallas with me to help film this adventure. As context, every year that this nerf event is held, Jared invites some of the biggest creators not only for the blaster battle, but for a multi-day vacation and tour of the area beforehand. This trip is especially meaningful to me because I've been waiting two years for this since I had to cancel my appearance twice in a row because of the pandemic. It feels surreal landing in Dallas and hopping into our private van with La Liberté Cinemas, Dr. Flux, and Welcome just chilling in the back. We talk about life and chow down on some food, pick up Coop 772 from the airport, go to an arcade where I keep winning prizes, oh and Captain Xavier arrives. All this stuff happens within just a few hours which gives me a realization. Our schedule is so packed with fun activities and some creators wouldn't be arriving until much later on, meaning there may not be enough opportunities to get everyone's signatures. After a great night of food and team games, Carl and I crash in our hotel room. I still got three more days to try to pull this thing off. On the morning of day two, Dr. Flux and I are both up earlier than the other VIP guests and we have a grand old time just looking at the nerf selection at a nearby target. This would be a great time to get his signature, but like a dum-dum, I don't have the dream catcher on me. The pace of the day only gets crazier and more fun. Now everyone's awake so we get breakfast, nom nom, go to Dallas Vintage Toys where we probably see some of the rarest collectible figures, and then get blown away at how cool the National Video Game Museum is. The amount of nostalgia I feel in this place is incredible. We get treated to a magician's act with the craziest magic tricks I've seen in person, check out nerf blasters at this giant ass sports store that has a freaking aquarium and a ferris wheel inside, try to go go-karting, get denied, get ice cream instead, play at a place that serves cider and all you can play arcade games, watch men duel with weapons while we eat chicken with our bare hands like feral animals, then go to bed. So yeah, we're never not busy. Who knew having fun would pose such an issue? There's so much awesome footage I want to show you but can't fit in this video, so consider subscribing since I'll be covering all the stuff I missed in the future. With only two days left, I have to start fighting to get this project done. And yes, I'm aware there's more to this trip than just getting a bunch of signatures, but for the sake of storytelling, just pretend I'm a heartless machine with this singular goal. It's the morning of day 3 and I try to switch up my strategy. Instead of leaving the Dreamcatcher in my suitcase and waiting for a long enough break to take it out for signatures, I just shove it in my backpack so I have easy access to it 24-7. And this changes everything. This morning while Carl is grabbing some drone shots, I managed to flag down Ri-Fi Channel, who arrived at the hotel the night before. Finally, my first victim. Here we go. Ooh, sweet revenge. Nice job on the, the paint, too. Oh, thank you. All right, so Ryan, would you be able to sign this for me? Absolutely, I would love yes. to. Oh, awesome. thank you. Yeah. What are you talking about? You did a great job on this. Oh, thank you. One down, nine to go. Oh, look at you. Come on. <laughs> look at this. It was a long lockdown, man. <laughs> 15 minutes later, while grabbing hotel breakfast, the most glorious thing happens. Almost every single nerf creator comes down here at once with a plan to go to Target for nerf shopping. And before leaving, Dr. Flux pulls out a foam axe he won from the arcade a couple days ago to get people to sign it. And that's when I slither in with the Dreamcatcher. So just white canvas. Oh wow. Canvas. La Liberté Cinemas. Dr. Flux. Coop 772. I forget how to spell my name. Captain Xavier. One by one, their essence is being sealed in this vessel. Then I hunt down the pink walrus. Okay, we're here with Walcom. Ah. I'm gonna say that I haven't messed up. <laughs> <laughs> right. I made this custom. Oh, it's a sweet revenge. Yeah, because I want it to be a canvas for everyone to sign for all the good memories we're gonna make. Perfect. Here Much smarter than me. Yes, and will you sign this for me? I will do my absolute best. This is crazy, in the span of an hour I went from zero signatures to every single signature of every creator here. But I still have to get signatures from four others who aren't here yet, like King Kowski and also Jared. Today's the day of the meet and greet where fans come to meet us. My goal is to grab the remaining signatures just before that event. Don't point that thing at me. <laughs> at lunchtime while eating some of the best damn barbecue I've had in my life, more victims, uh, I mean friends, start to arrive. VIP guests Damien and Dion in motion, and Sophie Lightning join in for the feast. After, we check into our new 4 star hotel, literally across from AT&T Stadium where the blaster battle is going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> this is another dimension. Carl and I are blown away at how nice this place is. Oh AT&T Stadium. It's literally in front of us. That's going to be us tomorrow. 
And finally, the meet and greet. We have a bit of time before it starts, so after setting up my booth with stickers and mini posters, I find the opportunity to get Damien and Dion's signatures Archie. and Sophie Lightning's. I was wondering if he gave the sign. Sweet. All right. Thank you so much. Kinkowski. You might also know him as PDK Films and his sister Anna make it just in time for this event. I've collaborated with Kinkowski before, but it's my first time meeting him in real life. The both of them are just super cool and down to earth. Soon, hundreds of fans roll in. It's incredibly humbling to meet fans who recognize me and compliment me on the videos I make. I sign their blasters, hand out merch, and some fans pose for photos with me while holding my still incomplete Sweet Revenge mod. After the event, I approach Kinkowski. Oh yeah, get that good lighting in there. All right, are we good? Would you be able to sign this for me? Absolutely, dude. All right, Let's sweet. Go. Really? What a history right there, dude. Yes. Let's go. Let's go, man. Awesome. All that's left is Jared's signature. Now things are getting real. It's the final day. I have no clue how a nerf battle with over 4,200 people is going to go. So yeah, I'm nervous and ecstatic. Looking at our schedule, we might have one hour of free time before the event. I have to make that count, especially since I had a major brain fart last night and realized that I also need Anna's signature on the blaster. If you didn't know, she's also a creator with her own massive channel. I packed up everything we need for the blaster battle. So the thing is, we're running out of time and I'm wondering, we need to get two some more signatures. That includes Anna Kowski and Jared. I don't know when I'm going to see them today, but I'm going to do my best to track them down and have them sign it. Us VIP guests have enough time in the afternoon to squeeze in a dip at the pool. But instead of awkwardly hunting for signatures, I just spend this time chatting and relaxing. About an hour later, it's time to head to AT&T Stadium. A few of us go together and get escorted by security through this dungeon labyrinth to the stadium entrance. And oh my god, I've never been anywhere like this. It doesn't feel real, and the fact that we have access to this right now it's absolutely insane. Jared's right here, so it's the perfect chance to stop him for his signature. I have about an hour to get Anna's signature, which seems doable, but she and Kinkowski aren't here yet, so I film footage for other videos, one of which is coming very soon. I also briefly chat with another VIP guest who has just arrived, Michael Pick. He's currently the record holder for the world's largest nerf blaster, beating out Mark Rober. But before I know it, our free time is up earlier than expected. Setup of the event has been running behind schedule, and we all start lending a hand to help blow up a bunch of nerf bunkers. Then we hurry to the back, shove pizza in our faces, participate in another meet and greet, and soon over 4200 people are here and we're getting completely wrecked on stage. Bruh. Commence the foam flinging. I'm having so much fun, and in between games, I'm still trying to squeeze in the chance to get Anna's signature. The problem is, there are thousands of people here, and this stadium is so huge that I barely know where anyone is. But a lucky break happens in between games when I go backstage and I finally see her. There we go, we're done! That, my friends, is a victory. Or is it? It's been such a crazy day that I haven't seen Michael Pick at all since our two minute interaction earlier that afternoon. It's only the next day after I arrived back in Vancouver that I realized I never even had the chance to get his signature, so ultimately I came up a little short on my goal. For the final touches of this project, I 3D scan the Dreamcatcher, take all the footage of everyone signing it, as well as this video you're watching, plop it on a USB, and attach it to the blaster so I can relive these moments at any time. This is one of the coolest projects I've worked on, and I want to thank you for helping me experience this amazing trip. Consider subscribing for more Blaster Battle content, hope you do something great today, and get that bread.